Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to our channel. Home is where our heart is. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world today. And firstly, I'd like to just welcome you all here and let you know that I'm grateful for you taking this little bit of time to join me here today in this beautiful, fresh, autumnal countryside. It's late autumn, winter's just around the corner. It's getting super cold around here, but you know what they say, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. All the leaves have fallen to the ground, leaving only them precious evergreen trees. So I thought today, what better way to celebrate the changing of the seasons than to dive into the world of the pine tree. The pine tree is an incredible tree, evergreen meaning it keeps its needle-like leaves all year long. So in this video we're going to learn how to identify pine trees, then we'll explore their world of free food and medicine. So let's talk about pine trees for a moment. What exactly is a pine tree? Because a pine tree is just a pine tree, right? Well, not exactly. Firstly, pine trees are conifers. And what is a conifer? To put that simply, a conifer is a bunch of plants that have cones. Now, it's really important that we learn how to identify the pine tree correctly because there's actually over 100 different species of pine in this world. And although many of them are edible, just a small little handful aren't edible and are in fact toxic. But with a few simple techniques, just a few tips, you can easily identify pine and then you'll be able to welcome the health benefits of its free food and medicine into your life. So what pines are edible? Well, the most popular edible pines are the white pine, the red pine and the Scots pine. But to list all the edible pines, you'd be here all day because there's so many species of pine. It's actually easier to list the pines that aren't edible when it comes to finding edible and medicinal pine trees. The pine trees to avoid are the Ponderosa pine tree, the Lodgepole pine, the Monterey pine, and there are also other trees that are commonly tagged as pine that you'd also make sure to avoid, such as the yew tree. Now, that is just a few of the toxic pines. I don't know all the toxic pines in the world, but that's why it's important that we learn how to correctly identify pine by taking some notes of some certain features, and then you will take this knowledge and apply it to the pine trees around you, and you'll be confident to find out whether you've got an edible pine. So firstly, the most important way, the first way to identify a pine tree is by its leaves. These needle-like leaves are very unique on the pine tree because when you look closely, you'll see that they grow out the branch in little tiny bundles. When you look close, you see they come out in little bundles. Now pine trees needles either grow in little bundles of twos, threes or fives and this really helps us tell what species of pine tree we have. This pine has little bundles of two needles that grow out to about six inches long and they have a slight tinge of yellow to their green. And then if I bend them, I see they snap with ease. Now this to me is a strong indicator that I've got a red pine tree. Then, once you've checked the leaves of the pine tree, it's time to check the bark. Now this pine's bark has a red orange hue to it and it's grey, scaly, and you can easily pick it. Now this red, orangey colour consistently goes all the way up the trunk. Another sign that I've got a red pine. And then we have the pine cone of the tree. Now the red pine's pine cone to me isn't very unique. It's about two inches big and it's not prickly. So I know that I now have a red pine tree, a Pinus resinosa. Now to identify pine trees is really simple. All you have to do is get a pen and paper, head out and find a pine tree. When you find one, first count its needles. 
Does its needles grow in little bundles? If so, how many? A pine needle will grow in twos, threes, or fives. Then take a note of how long its needle is, what color it is, and how brittle it is. And does it grow twisted together? Then take a note of its bark. Is its bark dark and cracked? Is it light gray, perhaps orange or red? Then take a note of its pine cone. And pines, pine cones can have individual characteristics that can really help you identify a pine tree. So just for the sake of learning how to identify pine trees, let's quickly learn how to identify another pine tree that I don't have here with me today that is often mistaken for the red pine, the Scots pine, Pinus sylvestris. You see, the Scots pine has bark almost exactly like the red pine, apart from when you look higher up the trunk, it flakes away orange and orange to the point where it looks like just a flaky orange trunk, but only higher up in the tree. Its needles grow in little bunches of two, just like the red pine, apart from unlike the red pine, these needles are much shorter and they grow twisted together. Now they're green with a hint of blue rather than a hint of yellow, like the red pine. And then its pine cones on the Scots pine are very unique and they have little bumps on the end of all of its scales. And that is a sure sign that you've got a Scots pine. So with these three tools, this easy bit of knowledge, you can explore the world of pine. And then once you've correctly identified the pine that grows around you, it's time to welcome its free food and medicine into your life. So now, assuming that you've correctly identified the pine around you, firstly, congratulations, because there's a great joy that can be found in learning how to identify trees and understanding the trees that grow around us. Now, the edible parts of pine, its needle-like leaves are edible, its inner bark, the cambium layer, is edible, and its pine nuts are edible. The posh packets of pine nuts that you can find in the shops come from the pine cones of the pine tree, and also the pollen of the pine is edible. So firstly, let's talk about the leaves of the pine tree. The leaves of the pine are incredible because they're a natural source of antioxidants, they're precious antioxidants, and they're also rich in vitamin A and vitamin C. Now, you can nibble these when you're off on your adventures in this big, blue, beautiful planet, and they taste like pine, a very refreshing pine scent and flavor. Now, most commonly, these are used to make cough syrups or, of course, to make pine needle tea. And it's a beautiful, fresh morning here, so I'm gonna make a fresh cup of pine needle tea to warm me up to go off this brief moment of sunshine that I've been blessed with. To make a pine needle tea is very, very simple. Just collect the freshest pine needles that you can ones that look healthy and green. Pluck off the little sheaths at the bottom because we don't want bits in our tea and then crunch up the needles and add them to a cup or a pan. Now I'm going to put in about a handful of needles because I want a strong pine needle tea because I love that evergreen flavour. So now I've collected a good bunch of pine needles and crushed them up, put them in my lovely bamboo cup. You just add hot water. We're gonna let that stew for about 10 minutes. Now, whether you're making pine needle tea at home or out in the wilderness, it's important to remember not to boil it because boiling it will reduce down that vitamin C content. What you want to do is boil the water, turn it off the heat so it's not boiling anymore, and then add your needles to it. 
Now pine needle tea is an especially precious tea because not only is it an incredible fresh pine flavour which I love but it's also rich in antioxidants, vitamin A and especially rich in vitamin C and it was the Native Americans that used to drink pine needle tea to help fight away scurvy, a disease caused by a lack of vitamin C. Now this pine needle tea has been brewing for about five minutes but I can already smell that is beautifully infused with the goodness of the pine tree. Now what's extra special about this tea is not that it's just so rich nutritionally but it's also rich medicinally too because we've crushed up the pine needles it absorbs the resin from the pine tree, the life force of the tree and that resin is antibacterial, antifungal and expectorant. And expectorant means to help us clear congestion from our bodies making this tea not only delicious, not only nutritious but powerfully medicinal to help treat things such as coughs and colds. Now the resin of this tree that's absorbed into this tea being antibacterial and antifungal also makes this tea itself a good healing wash that can be used for cleaning wounds or to help soothe and treat things like rashes. Now it's the resin that flows within the pine tree that's the true miracle of the pine and contains the richest antibacterial, antifungal and expectorant properties but not only does it contain all them powerful medicinal properties it also has drawing properties. And what does that mean? That means when you apply it to the skin it can draw out things like infections or even draw out splinters that have become wedged under our skin. Now this resin smells of pine, that's where that rich pine smell comes from and it flows within the tree just like blood does within our bodies and the way you can find it is it leaks out of pine trees wounds. This resin leaks out of the pine's wounds and heals itself. It covers itself and heals itself and what's incredible is our connection between us and nature is so strong that we can take this resin that's for healing the tree and put it on our own body and heal ourselves. This resin that oozes from the pine tree can be taken off the pine and chewed like a natural gum and you can find it collecting in clumps. Now when you chew this like a natural gum it carries all the medicinal properties making this gum very good for soothing and healing sore throats. Now, you can find big clumps of this resin that build up over time in soft, squidgy, white lumps. You can pull this off the pine tree and heat this up with beeswax and this infuses it with the beeswax and this makes a really good antifungal natural ointment that people often use for things such as sore, cracked feet. Now this resin of the pine tree is very, very special because it has so many uses. You'll find when it first oozes out of the pine that it's very runny and sticky and if you try to chew it like the gum that it sticks all over your teeth. To chew the resin like gum you have to find a slightly aged bit that's a bit squidgy but the fresh resin being able to stick all over your teeth this isn't actually a bad thing because it's antibacterial and antifungal being able to stick to our teeth it's a great thing because if we lose a filling or have the unfortune of being out basking on the ambience of a beautiful day and we fall and break our tooth, we can take this resin and apply it over the broken tooth or in the filling hole. Being antibacterial and antifungal keeps this tooth safe and it also reduces the suffering. And of course, breaking a tooth is very painful. Now, this resin, in the world of bushcraft is called pitch and they mix this resin with ash and it can be used for many things such as starting fires or gluing spearheads to sticks to spear whatever you want to spear. <laughs>
And then we have what's called the cambium layer. The cambium layer within the pine tree is edible and it's been used by cultures such as the Native Americans to help them endure the long, cold, harsh winters. They take the cambium layer and dry it out and grind it up into a flower. Now you can take this pine flower and mix it with other flowers such as acorn flower. And this not only preserves the shelf life of the cambium layer of the pine but it adds the pine goodness to the acorn flower or whatever flower you've decided to mix it with. Now the bark of the pine is incredibly special because it's had this life force of the resin flowing through it for its entire life. You can buy pine bark extract in the posh fancy health food stores today as a supplement and this extract on certain species of pine has been studied and showed that by supplementing this pine bark extract it can actually reduce the symptoms of asthma. Now most pine trees are what's called monoecious. Now this means that they have both male and female cones on each tree and it's the male cones of the pine tree that produces the pollen. You might have seen in spring this bright yellow pollen that drifts through the air covering cars and making people sneeze. This is the pine pollen and this is edible and easily harvested just by placing a bag over the male cones of the pine tree and shaking it. This quickly fills up the bag for the bright yellow edible pine pollen. Now this pine pollen is super rich in nutrients and minerals and antioxidants but what makes it incredibly incredibly special is it's one of the rare substances in nature that naturally boosts our testosterone and having a good balance of testosterone in our bodies is vital for our health for both men and women. Then it's inside the female pine cones that we'll find the seeds, what we know as the pine nuts. Inside these female cones is where these pine nuts are grown. Now these pine nuts contain proteins, fats, irons, fiber, vitamin E and magnesium and are incredibly good for our health. But you have to beat the squirrels to them first. Now when it comes to the mythology that surrounds the pine tree, our ancestors were absolutely fascinated with the pine, as well as all the other evergreen trees that grow all around them. The evergreen trees mythology all kind of intertwine together to make symbolism. Now, as you can imagine, living back in the days thousands of years ago and watching these trees grow from the earth, live and die and become rejuvenated every spring, the evergreens really caught the attention of the ancient people because when autumn came along, all the leaves would fall and they would most likely assume that all the trees now are barren of life and potentially have died, whereas the evergreens would still stand strong, providing them with food and medicine making the pine tree as well as many other evergreen trees all around the world represent immortality and fertility and our ancestors were obsessed with attempting to transfer this immortality from evergreen trees into themselves of course to become immortal. <laughs> now symbolism is incredible you can find it deep within books or on the internet or you can find it growing freely all around us when you look close enough even the humble pine cone can be rich in symbolism if we take a look at its life's journey. You see, a pine cone takes care of the pine tree's seeds, the future generations of the tree, and it really does take care of these seeds. When the weather gets too cold or damp, it closes up to protect the seeds and keep them warm and dry. And when the conditions are perfect, it opens up like this so the seeds can drift away and fly to their new destinies as new trees. This pine cone somehow knows when the conditions are just right for the seeds to drift away and start their new lives as trees. Now what's incredible about a pine cone is it can devote more than 10 years to its seeds on the tree until it finally can't hold on anymore and drops to the ground for us to find as we're walking our dogs through the countryside. It devotes more than 10 years sometimes to its seeds until these future generations are ready to fly. And sometimes you might find a pine cone on the ground 
like this because it's still taking care of its seeds even though it's cut off from the life force of the tree it knows that the seeds within the future generations are so important that it needs to hang on until the conditions are right and then it will open on the ground and then hopefully these seeds can fly away now i think that's a beautiful bit of symbolism to be found just in the humble pine cone anyway people it's been a pleasure i hope you've enjoyed my guide to pine don't forget to like comment and subscribe ring the bell follow us on facebook and instagram and all their modern world things join our patreon if you want to help us to continue to create this content and i'll see you all next time peace mm -hmm.